Hey all, welcome back to another episode of Car Topics Explained. I am your host, Tom the Racing Joker, and today we will be covering the filming locations of the first Fast and the Furious film. I will be including coordinates and addresses for each of the places in the description. The opening truck hijacking scene takes place right on the edge of Wilmington and Long Beach. It's around Henry Ford Avenue, Alameda Street, uh, Pacific Coast Highway, and Terminal Island Freeway. You can even see the Texaco refinery in the background. There's not much else to really say about this location, much like the cars used in the scene. They were just EX and DX Honda Civic Coupes, some with fake sunroofs, maybe one or two with real ones, and they had no performance modifications and were all automatics. Up next is a parking lot by Dodger Stadium. It is at this location where we are introduced to the character of Brian O'Connor for the very first time. We also get to see the legendary Mitsubishi Eclipse get tested as Brian prepares to go to a race the following night. You can see that the main hero car was used for the intro shots, but then for all of the driving clips, including Brian driving away, stunt doubles were used. You can tell because the ride height of the car changes. And I'm pretty sure they also used a Rig car for the sequence as well. Up next we've got Toretto's Market, which is just down the road from the Toretto House in Echo Park. Here we meet Mia, Vince, Letty, Jesse, Leon, and Dom. This is where we get the tuna no crust scene and the fight between Brian and Vince. The location in real life is actually a store called Bob's Market. When you go there, you will realize, as the case is with most of the film's locations, it is very different today than how it was in the movie, or just back in the day in 2001 or 2000. But despite that, you can still go inside today, buy model replicas of Fast and Furious cars, and see the impact film has had on the location throughout its history. Moving on to the next scene, we head over to the Racer's Edge, a fictional automotive performance shop. Cringy parking there, Brian. The whole place was fake and meant to basically be performance part eye candy. The building is located in Hollywood on Orange Drive at the southeast corner of Orange Drive and Santa Monica Boulevard. The filmmaker shot the west side of the building, which faces Orange Drive. After filming, everything was removed, including the car on the roof. And after we see Brian demand some nitrous from Harry... I need Nas. We move on to the night meet. At 747 Warehouse Street in Los Angeles, we transition to night and watch as hundreds of modified imports squeeze in between these two buildings. This is where we meet Hector, Edwin, who speaks in the third person for some reason. Edwin happens to know a few things. And one of the things Edwin knows is, it's not how you stand by your car, it's how you race your car. You better learn that. And RJ Devera's character named Danny Yamato. And also, we almost see Leon mow down someone's leg. Moving on to the night race, the actual location of the race was near Hawthorne Airport on Prairie Avenue. They started at Prairie and 120th Street and finished at Prairie and 118th Street. This whole sequence took five days to film. After the race and the whole cop chase sequence, we end up at the Vietnamese Cultural Court where we meet Johnny Tran, Snakeskin Pants Lance, and the rest of the Tran crew. This is also where this happens. Nitrous oxide doesn't cause explosions like that, but that doesn't change how iconic this scene is. And actually, let me talk you through how they blew up the eclipse. For starters, the car they used had nothing in it. They took out the engine, gas tank, transmission, and every other item inside the car. The windows were tinted darker to hide the fact that the car was stripped out on the inside and rigged to explode. The doors were cabled to the car to prevent them from flying off and being a hazard, much like how also the glass was changed, amongst a few other things, to reduce the number of dangerous projectiles caused by the explosion. The source of the explosion would be a cylinder of chemicals about the same size as a keg of beer, which was placed at the car's center of gravity to launch it into the air. After this scene, we finally get to see the Toretto House. Located at 720 East Kensington Road in California, here we see the home of Dom and his family, and we get to know some of the characters better. Where were you? By the way, Matt, the actor who played Vince, actually knew how to play guitar. I can't tell what game Letty is playing, though, or how she hasn't been stepped on by anybody. 
But the garage outside is probably the most famous aspect of the house, the place where the 900 horsepower Dodge Charger is kept. Well, this garage was actually built just for the movie, and in fact, the driveway it was built on belonged to the house on the right. Another fun fact, the house today is divided into apartments and is no longer a single family home. Fast forward a little bit to Brian taking Mia on a date to the same place where Vince wanted to take her, Rip Vince. They went to a restaurant called Cha Cha Cha, and this was a real restaurant that served Caribbean food. It was located at 656 North Virgil Avenue, but you can't visit it because within the last few years, it was closed and has since been bulldozed to the ground. So if any of you were thinking of taking your SO on a Fast and Furious themed date, it's too late to go to Cha Cha Cha. But you can go to Neptune's Net. Right after the Super Races of the Ferrari F355 on Pacifica Coast Highway, this is where they went. It's a real restaurant, and it's still open. So if you want to take someone there and argue about who got the shrimp, then this is the place. No, but seriously, the menu actually looks really good. And now, we move on to Race Wars. It was held at San Bernardino Airport. All of the extras invited to participate would have received invites to be in the upcoming import tuner film, Redline. By now, you can guess Redline was just a working title before the name The Fast and the Furious was chosen. Another fun fact is that Craig Lieberman's Maxima, aka Vince's car, served as part of the entertainment with its $20,000 stereo system. And by the way, here's Craig Lieberman, who played the role of the race starter. Alright, here we go. The Johnny Tran chase in Echo Park. A little after the chase starts, they end up racing down a steep hill. This is, and I'm sorry if I butcher this name, Michael Torina Street between Sunset Boulevard and Lucille Avenue. And moving on a little later, Johnny Tran dies under an overpass on Glendale Boulevard. The exact coordinates and address will be in the description, of course. You can recognize the art on the walls from this scene. And then, of course, just up this hill is where we see Dom in his charger before he races away to the final location. All right, here it is, the final filming location. I've got coordinates for three stages of the train race. The start line, the finish line, and then the last time we see the orange Supra in the franchise. The race starts on the T-junction of Terminal Way and Tuna Street. They race east up Terminal Way until they get to the train track crossing that runs parallel beside Earl Street, which is the finish line. Then the crash with the semi happens, and then they end up where Terminal Way and Ferry Street meet. The last shot of the film takes place here, and it's the last time where we see the orange Supra, canonically. Quick PSA, some of these places might not be safe to visit at night, and also be aware that locations such as the final race area are watched by police for obvious reasons. If you do intend to visit these places, just be responsible and respectful. I've always wanted to visit California and visit all of these places one day. What do you guys think? An actual physical tour of all these locations could be cool, right? I'll probably wait until either the WRX is a little more built up or until I have a project car because it would feel weird to visit these places in unmodified cars, at least for me. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more Fast and the Furious content, then check out my series, Car Topics Explained, where I cover the builds and stories of cars in the films. Beyond that, I also cover race cars, future cars, rare examples of cars, video game cars, the difficulties of importing cars into the US, and I do a lot of Skyline content in general. Beyond Car Topics Explained, I do vlogs, hands-on car reviews, I have a series documenting my adventures modifying my own cars, and I do gaming. So if any of that interests you, then have a peruse through my channel, and hey, if you're extra cool, then maybe even subscribe. But once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. I, Tom, the Racing Joker, will be signing out. Keep it crazy, everybody.